Hi everyone, this is Linda and we're going to create a very simple basic bookmark. This bookmark can be done in all three versions of the software. So in basic, it can be done in extra or it can be done in ultra. It's a pretty simple little process. You can make multiple of them. You can not put a decorative stitch in here. You could actually just use decorative fabric. So let's say you want to make Halloween ones. You could put a bunch of Halloween fabric in here and you're going to actually have the backside is actually going to cover the stitches so you're going to sew everything all out on top of fabric and then you're going to, before you do the last steps you're actually going to slide another piece of fabric underneath in order to cover up the background so that you don't have all the, the jump stitches and those kinds of things in your bobbin thread throwing so we're let's get started so the first thing we you need to notice is that this is not a non-standard size hoop. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create this. So I'm going to pop on over and I've got a new window here and I'm going to change the hoop. Now you from the home tab, you can either select change hoop or you can actually change hoop by selecting here. You can also do a Control H, which takes you also there, but it doesn't really matter. But we're going to create a hoop that doesn't exist. So enter hoop size. And I want my bookmark to be two inches by six inches. And I know that doesn't really exist, but if you notice, I was actually able to put in the actual size I want. Now, did I have that two inches, two inches? Oops, I didn't. And again, I'm going to try, double check myself, six inches. So because I'm using inches, it converted it automatically to the millimeters. So I now have this hoop that doesn't exist. But because of the way we're going to create this process, I want my design to actually fit into this particular area. So well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the border tab. And you want to change your margin to one millimeter and you want to uncheck where it says group and because I don't want things to get grouped together before I tell it to actually group. So what I'm going to do is the reason we created this hoop the size it is is because this margin one millimeter it's going to create our design that's one millimeter in from the outside edge and so the first thing you want to do is you're going to come in here where it says running stitch, stitch and select running stitch and I'm going to go to options and I'm going to change my length to 6.0 because all I want to do is I want to do a placement line to put my know where to lay my fabric on top of my stabilizer and then I want to lay the fabric down and then actually sew another stitch. So I'm going to leave that at 6.0. And because I actually want to see what the fabric looks like, I'm going to click on Add Applique. And Add Applique is going to allow me to actually see that fabric. So I'm going to select Fabric. And I can actually change this. I can go to Fall Colors. I can go to Winter Colors. And I'm actually going to go back to Spring because I want some Spring. And I want a real light, light purple. And I could choose my own fabric if I wanted to, but I'm just going to choose that particular one. So I'm going to do OK. And I'm going to do options. And because I don't want a standard applique, a standard applique does three steps. Puts a stitch down where you need to lay your fabric, a second stitch to stop so that you can cut your fabric, and then a third stop that, or a sec, another stop that's going to let you then do the um, outside edge. So I'm going to just use pre cut piece. This doesn't mean anything, it's just going to cut down my number of steps that I need to do. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my running stitch length to a 6.0 and a 6.0. It just means it's going to stitch out faster. It's still going to have the stops that I need it to happen. So what it will do is it's going to lay a, put a stitch down at 6.0. It's going to allow me to lay my fabric and then it's going to do it again. And it's going to do this double stitch so I can actually trim it if I want to at that particular time. I can also wait to trim it but it makes it really nice because I can actually see my fabric here. Voila, there you have fabric. There's your two steps that are right here. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually add some decorative stitches in here. So to do that, we're going to still stay on the border tab, which is where we are right now. And I want to have repeats and select one, select motif. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to make sure I'm in the group who's far in a Viking. I'm going to change the category to E crafting stitches. And the first one I want to use is actually the little leaves. 
which is this one. So I now have the leaves chosen and I'm not going to do anything special. I'm not going to change it to a triple stitch. You could do that if you wanted to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then I want to make sure nothing is selected here. I'm going to select outside of the group and I'm going to hit apply. And it's going to pop that right into the center and I want to change the color to a green. So I'm just, I still have the spring colors are still selected. If I want to go back to the standard, I can do that. And I'm going to choose a green. Let's choose a lighter green here. Do OK. And now that's green. Now I need to actually do the flower. So I'm going to go to select motif again. And I'm going to go to the flower, which is up here towards the top. And this is the one I want. I'm going to do OK. I'm not changing anything about it. Make sure nothing is selected, hit apply, and it should pop it right into the center. And I'm going to change the color of that. And I'm going to go to, oh, let's make it an orange just so it stands out. Now I need to go to Encore, but the first thing I need to do is I need to get both these pieces selected. So I'm going to go Home. I'm going to click on Box Select. Click, hold, and drag a box around both pieces and make sure you have a hundred percent of those two pieces. If you only have a partial, it will not grab that piece. So I'm going to let go of my mouse and I now have both pieces selected. You notice it's a group. We're going to go over to the Encore tab. I want a straight line. So I've got the line chosen. Now I could choose a woven, a wee, a <laughs> A squiggly line or I can make it go around in circles. I can do a couple of different things. I'm just going to leave it at a straight line for this. I'm leaving it the standard so that it's not mirrored image. I'm going to hit preview. So this is basically what I want. So I can actually stretch this out if I want to, but I actually want these so that they're just almost just touching and I'm going to hit apply. I wish I could take and turn this and rotate this to see if it fit perfect, but can't do that here, so I have to hit apply first. Now I know that's what I want, and I need to get it rotated. Now I could take the little circle here and see when I move my mouse, I have the little rotate there, but I'm going to actually do right mouse, and I'm going to click on properties, and I'm going to turn this 270, because I need to get it to flip all the way around, so I want the flower up at the top. Now that's centered up and down, and I really don't want that. I want that actually to be way down here at the bottom. And it's okay that the bottom of this is actually right there at the edge. It's as long as it's inside the hoop, because of course, remember, you're going to change the hoop anyway um, to actually stitch it out. But I want it right there at the very, very edge. Now, what I could do is I could actually take it here. I could go home and I could say move into hoop and I could move it into the hoop very easily. And I know it's going to be inside and I'm going to move it over with my arrow keys. Just a few little steps. Okay, so now I have that. Now I need to, the next step I need to do is baste my back piece of fabric onto this so that it knows I need it to be in place and holding still. So I'm going to actually come back over to the border tab. I'm going to make sure nothing is selected. I've got margin still at 1.0. And I'm going to, again, I've got this one selected. I need to deselect Add Applique. So I'm going to click on that so it's no longer highlighted. And I'm going to make sure my option still says 6.0, which is good. I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to hit Apply. And it's going to put a tack down stitch to hold my fabric in place in the back. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to change that color because I want to make sure it doesn't go out of order of the way things start because things always start with the blue which is the way the software just works so I want to make sure that that doesn't get placed in a different order than it already is okay so now I've got that so that it's holding my back fabric in place and I now need to get this little buttonhole that's going to go here. So I'm going to go to the letter tab. And the letter tab, if you don't have this, and I don't remember what all fonts you can use in the extra and 
the basic version, but if you have condensed block, uppercase 15 to 25, this is a perfect font for this. Otherwise, you may have to play with it a little bit. So I'm going to actually type in a capital O, not a zero, capital O, and I'm going to leave it at 15 millimeters, which is fine. I'm going to make sure nothing is selected so it doesn't try and group it with there. And I'm going to hit apply, and it's going to put it right there to the center. And I don't I can leave it going up and down, but I'm actually going to turn it so it's going the uh, opposite side so that when I put my ribbon in here, it's actually going to have someplace nice to lay. So I'm going to do a right mouse. I'm going to hit properties and I want to rotate it and I can rotate it just 90. And that's about where I want it. Perfect. Now the last thing I need to do, now remember, I waited to do this buttonhole until I had actually attached that back piece of fabric so that it would go through all layers. Now the other thing I need to do is actually get this satin stitch that's going around the outside edge. Now if you really wanted to, you could make this raw edge if you wanted, but we're going to have put a satin stitch on here. So I'm going to go back to the border tab. Make sure nothing is selected and I'm going to change my margin to zero. And what you're going to do when you, just before you get ready to do this, when you're actually stitching it out, is you're going to stitch your top layers of fabric. You're going to start trim your um, back fabric just so that you have no excess fabric hanging out. Now, if I was going to do raw edge, I wouldn't do that. I would probably just go in and just do whatever I wanted to around the outside edge to hold everything nicely together. Remember, everything is a basting stitch right now. And so I'm going to actually say, I want it to be a satin stitch. I've got zero margin, so it's going to be right outside to the edge. I'm going to go to options, and I'm going to make this like a 3, 3.5 makes it a little bit big. I don't want the density quite so heavy. I'm actually going to make it a 6 and do OK. And then remember to hit apply. Now make sure nothing is selected. If I had still this selected here, where it would put is actually around here, and I want it to be around the outside edge. So making sure nothing is selected by clicking out here, hit apply, and it's going to put this nice satin edge. I'm going to change my color, and I'm going to make it, oh, we'll go with a dark, dark purple someplace in here. All right, now I can actually watch this stitch out. No, I could have changed that green too. I'm just going to leave it just like it is, and we're going to watch this stitch out and see what happens. So there's my first step. Now I can lay my fabric down. And it's going to lay my fabric down. It's going to stitch that in place so it doesn't move on me. And this is just your top layer. And it's so you would have just your bat, your your stabilizer and your fabric. Now, if you wanted to use a little stiffener in there, you could do that too. So it's going to sew that. My flower. And then it's going to sew a stitch to attach my back fabric. And then it's going to do this nice little hole here that I'm going to use for my buttonhole to put my ribbon in. And then I'm it's going to, again, sew a stitch around the outside edge before the um, satin line actually gets sewn. It's putting my underlay stitches. And it's going to sew the satin stitch all the way around. Now, sometimes what I like to do is actually have a stitch that's actually on top of this. So I'm going to change this back to a one and I'm going to go over to a running stitch. I'm going to change my options and I'm going to go to a 3.0 and I'm going to hit OK. Make sure nothing is selected. So it's going to take it and it's going to put the stitch just in just a little bit. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So now it's added this additional stitch on top of everything. And I actually want, I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to, I need to get to that color again because I don't want it to be blue. I'm going to hold my shift and tab, get the blue. And I'm going to change that. Oh, let's make it pink just so it stands out really well. Again, I'm going to zoom in just so you can see that. So now you've got this stitch that's going all the way around and it's kind of adding a little bit to it. You don't have to do that. I sometimes like to do that and you might want to change. I'm going to do undo and undo and I'm going to change that instead of it being a 1.0, I'm going to put it at two. So it's going to actually put it in just a little bit more 
oops, and I forgot to unselect. See that? Hit undo. Make sure nothing is selected. Hit apply and see how much further in it is. And so I have this in here. I have the little straight line that's going along here and I'm going to change that color to a really bright pink. So I can actually see it and I'm going to zoom back out. So now I have this. Now I could actually watch this sew. Now don't forget, I always forget this on my videos, is to say, save as, so I can save it as the same thing as I need it to save. So I'm going to make it um, bookmark for video, just so that I know the difference. So there, it's a VP4 save. And now I want to make sure when I go to export this, that I can choose and I want to go to configure and just make sure everything's set. So I'm going to go to my export tab and I've got everything selected, which is fine. I need it to color sort for this particular thing. Sometimes I don't. And I'm going to hit my save as or my export, make sure it's VP3, everything selected, good. And I'm going to go in and I'm, it automatically will save it for me as a VP3 to be used in my machine. So I really do like seeing people actually stitch these out and sharing them because it really kind of encourages me to do more. So I hope you enjoy this. Just as an additional note, if you wanted to do these as a repeat, you could actually change your hoop and go to a larger hoop. So I'm going to uncheck inner hoop size. I'm going to do, choose a 240 by 200 hoop. And I don't know why I'm choosing that many, but I could actually, but see if I move that, it's only going to move part of it. So I have to be very careful. I want to do a control A and get the whole thing selected. And I can do here and I can do um, top right mouse and I can do copy and then a right mouse and I can do paste and I can move it over. And I can do, let's put three of them in here. And because it's already in here, I can do a paste again, right mouse, and I can do paste. And I can actually move this one right here. And then when I go to export it, it's going to color sort and do all those things for me. So that's why it's really important that as you're going through these processes, that you make sure your colors are getting changed. So let's see what happens if I go to print this out or go to sew this out. And see how it does? It's going to do all my colors in a nice clean order. I like doing that. So don't forget to, if you want to export the multi, you can do that. And then you do your, your I'm sorry, do the save as so that you save it as a multi and then you do your export. But it makes it really nice. Again, you could do anything you wanted to in any one of these. So I hope you enjoy and I really do enjoy seeing pictures of what you do. So share. Thanks.